So over the years, we've seen a number of patterns evolve uh, within our customers on their projects. And, and coming out of that, there's really some very common best practices we see that you know, our most successful customers always follow. So let's talk about um, kind of project management methodologies and approaches. And, and, and one of the best practices we've seen um, is you know, starting small um, and then iterating and building a solution up over time versus more of the big bang approach where we try to um, deliver a large complex solution with a, with a long runway, more of a waterfall based approach. Yeah, I think that one of the big problems we have, in, or, or you can see in the MDM space, is we focus too much on the master and not enough on the data management. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of go through the project plan, um, you know, some of the big players that started in this industry, they would look at things like Customer 360 and things like this. And large consulting organizations or large software organizations can sometimes pull you into a project that says, well, it's not going to be successful unless you handle it for your entire organization. And it really behooves them for you to just kind of work through this waterfall method where there's not a lot of lessons learned and you really get something at the end of two years where there's a lot of people working on it. But what you really want to do is be able to um, recalibrate and redirect yourself every month or two months, right? If you're doing a project where you're going for too long without um, seeing wins or being able to, to measure success, then you know, you're never gonna know where you get off the rails and, and you could end up someplace you never wanted to be or get there so late that the, the project is, uh, the business nature and the business problems have changed in your organization and, and no longer are being addressed by the solution. Right, two, two years ago, we set on this big endeavor to get a better handle on who our customers <laughs> are and their mailing addresses and now two years later, Everything's digital, so yeah, it doesn't matter, online. right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, we don't send any more mail out, so that really stinks. That <laughs> yeah. nobody's actually getting stuff at their yeah. house. Yeah. Well, that's where, uh, as you said, picking that scope of a first project, understanding the kind of um, valuable proposition there that you're valuable change that you're trying to make, um, and and if you can build a cadence of releases so that you're iterating through not just that you know the big goal might be um, building out a a centralized list of customer data, um, but let's let's set some initial goals and milestones <coughs> along that way so that we can measure progress and um, actually improve it over time. Maybe we add stakeholders into the second release so that we can think about bringing additional data in when it makes sense. Um, obviously, you plan for that, but you have to do it on a small basis. And, and we can do iterations. You know, we, Commonly, we're working with customers on two-week sprints. Um, sometimes it's three or four-week sprints. Um, and then that is really how they're able to quickly show progress and get through those testing cycles that are necessary, as well as to demonstrate the value that's needed. So some things you could iterate over, right? You know, obviously you could say, well, we've got three systems with data in it. We'll start with just one or two, and then iterate. as we iterate, we'll bring in data from more systems, or you could, you could iterate by adding scope from a kind of data element, stakeholder perspective. Well, we'll start with getting this information gathered together and we'll focus first on what marketing needs and then maybe next we'll, we'll, we'll kind of drag in some additional information we want to track that's relevant for finance. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can iterate by data sources, you know, kind of number of records, by, um, you know, by uh, the data itself, like how, yeah, adding more data elements to support more stakeholders. You could also iterate over new processes so we could say, hey, we'll tackle this process and then the next sprint we'll tackle this new process that we want to implement. But again, it's all about getting something working and finished and behind you and then tackling, going on to tackle the next thing. Exactly, another common way of doing that is with divisions or conversion processes. Right. Um, as a new system is gonna be rolled out, often we, de we determine what data is in scope for that, that system or for that new set of processes. And um, you would gradually expand your footprint so that over time you're including more data um, and you're able to kind of cast your net a bit wider each time. Right. Um, and. Uh, that was a kind of an exciting thing. We worked with a large financial services company here in Atlanta. They were rolling out their new SAP system. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, they knew they were gonna use a country-based rollout plan. Um, and so that was how we aligned the project. We did all the sprints based around their, their rollout plan. And they were able to successfully implement each country when time came. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I think in those situations also the benefit is, is that you're gonna limit your stakeholders so you're not trying to have 100 people on a project all having to spin cycles in, in phase one. And if you can do that in a country approach, right, I can have business stakeholders in each country uh, taking lessons learned from the prior country. Okay. Yep. So in summary, it's, it's you know, follow more of an agile methodology, um, get something out the door quickly, iterate on that, um, and you can, you can iterate based off of stakeholders, uh, source systems, processes, um, you know, data sets, if you will. 
Um, the bottom line is figure out a way to deliver value early and then keep adding on that versus you know, spending a, a lengthy period of time before there's any value recognized.